I now recognize Chair, uh, Chairman Gomer of the full committee for his minutes of questions. Thank you. On February 12, 2021, the Biden administration released its first school reopening guidance, which frankly might be better described as school closing guidance since it recommended keeping 90 percent of America's schools closed. Documents and testimony gathered by this committee show the CDC and AFT, American Federation of Teachers, work closely on this guidance. Some of AFT's suggestions were included nearly word for word by Director Walensky herself. In a transcribed interview, a career CDC official testified that this level of coordination was, quote, uncommon, end quote. That's what we're here to find out, as the chairman said. Why did the AFT get uncommon access to the CDC and the Biden administration? According to documents we reviewed, AFT first received a copy of the draft reopening guidance on January 27, 2021. Is that correct? No. Do you know when you first got a copy of the guidance? According to the documents that we sent to you, we have got we, what we believe is that we got the guidance from NIOSH and the draft guidance from NIOSH, which is a committee within the CDC, as well as the CDC themselves okay. after the conversation we had well, on January 29th. And, and the, what's it called? NIOSH is part of the CDC. Correct. Right. We got, so, they, the, I think you're looking at a document. Can I, can I see the document? Well, we'll get at? them to you. The no, draft no, no, guidance, just, no, no, listen, I'm talking. I'm not, this is, I, I run a committee too. We're, Sorry. We'll, we, we're trying to work together. We have five minutes, so we're trying to get this, uh, get as much out as we can. This is very important. I have kids in the public school system in a school system that was, was shut down longer than average in the state of Kentucky. And it, it, it's, it's bad, parents are mad, our kids are behind, we're trying to find answers, we wanna prevent the problem in the future. The draft guidance is marked pre-decisional uh, and says please do not distribute, yet it was provided anyway. Now do you know if any other groups the CDC consulted with received a copy of this guidance at the time? I have no idea. Do you know when the guidance was finally published? I believe the guidance was published on February 12th. When asked, is it common to send deliberative or pre-decisional guidances outside of the government to CDC partners, a career CDC scientist responded, we may send summaries like the day before we were going to release something. But eight, the, the American Federation of Teachers got a full document and you got it two weeks before, according to our record. And do, you want, do you want me to respond, sir, or no? I'll, I'll ask a question. Did AFT provide any draft language to the CDC for inclusion into this guidance before it was published? The, the one, so we had the meeting with the CDC on January 29th. My recollection is that we got a draft of the guidance after that, even though I think the document that you're reading has another date on it. Is it common for outside groups to send draft language to the CDC? We, what we did was we went through the areas that we raised because the presumption was how do we reopen and keep schools open? So, and, we, and we talked about issues of immunocompromised adults and the so CDC said So did the CDC today, accept any of that? The edits CD you all proposed? The, the CDC asked for language on that, which we provided. So, so that one so piece of language, okay. so, so they asked us for language on immunocompromised workers, and we presented that language to them. So when we were, during the interview with the CDC career employee, it was asked if between 2001 and 2021, had he ever incorporated edits or additions that came from an outside group? And the career scientist responded, I don't remember any assistance. So to summarize, uh, a AFT was provided with a full draft copy of the guidance two weeks before publication, suggested line by line edits. No, we did not, sir. Did we not did not suggest line by line edits to the document. Well, do you remember how many edits that you suggested? We suggested, we, we suggested concepts, sir, which we have 
submitted as part of the document request you asked. We suggested concepts, including robust do, testing. Do you know how many edits were included? One. One. Do you remember what that edit was? The reasonable accommodation issue. And then in addition, about a week later, when we were going back and forth with all of the groups, there were several other meetings with different groups and things like that. You saw, and the chairman just said this, the issue about, um, ins about having um, a review if there was a new variant. We had seen someone had leaked language to either the New York Times or the Washington Post. And so that's when we suggested that if there's a new variant, there should be a review. And there were variants, my recollection is there were variants at that time. So those were the two things that we suggested in the 38 pages that showed up in the guidance. Well, I'll, I'll uh, go back, Mr. Chairman, and say that it, it, it's unusual for political union uh, to have such a role in, in scientific guidance process, and hopefully we can find more answers in this hearing. I yield back. 